Hey guys, what's going on? It's Luke. Hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, a couple days ago, I published a little song called Baby Bath. So I thought I'd run through it with you guys, show you how it was made. Um, before we get into it, I'll have all the links in the description for you to stream it. And if you haven't already, and uh, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, uh, follow my Instagram, SoundCloud, all that shit too. Um, so... In case you haven't heard it already, I'm going to run through like half of it and then um, you can skip ahead if you've already heard it. Uh, then I'm usually pretty long winded about this stuff. So I'm going to try to be quicker this time. Um, I'm going to run through the elements just so you can see what comprises the song. And then I'm going to focus on like some tips that I think um, you can implement to make your music better. So here we go. I'm going to play a little bit. So my CPU kind of overloaded there a little bit. Sorry for the pops and crackles. I might just replace that with um, the wave audio later on. Um, so first, I'm going to run through some elements and address some stuff along the way. Um, but I have uh, three points that I want to um, address specifically that I think uh, you guys could possibly work on. So first, uh, here's my drum group. So um, basically, I think what makes this groove is um, the swing. I've used some loops that have a little bit of like delay and um, pocket to it. But for the most part, I just use the um, millisecond uh, settings on this delay um, interface that you can open up on the side here of Ableton. Um, so like hi-hats. I always push forward and then a, um, so that means like drag it to make it a positive number. So it starts at zero, drag it to where it was at nine. Um, in this case, these are just some hats, um, really just push stuff to make it kind of, um, as messed up as possible while still being a, um, straight enough groove to be understood. Um, and then like, uh, snares, I usually um, pull forward a little bit, which usually, which just means making the um, delay value negative rather than positive. So um, I've used a uh, kick from the count sample pack. I've done a little bit of EQ and uh, frequency shifting to make sure that it's in the key that I wanted. Um, Sorry for the pops again. My processing, I guess, is too much whenever I have OBS on. Um, so then uh, here's one of the hi-hats I'm using. You can tell it's got lots of vinyl crackle in it. I, I was kind of referring to this song as hi-fi because it, it feels a lot like lo-fi in the way that the elements kind of work together, but I haven't like totally squashed the EQ to make it like filtered and, and not like have all frequencies in it like uh or as opposed to um how lo-fi works anyway um so then these open hats i think open hats totally make a groove there's some closed in here too but i, I this is where my open hats come in um 
So I usually just drag them. Uh, sometimes I make them even later on the grid just to put them in the exact pocket that I want them. Um, and then one of my favorite parts in the perk uh, group is the snare roll. Okay, I obviously can't handle um, this CPU shit, so I'm going to turn off my mastering and then just turn up this thing here. So the snare roll, snare roll is one of my favorite parts, and then this uh, cowbell is is probably my singular favorite part. And then I make like a pause after that to really uh, highlight it. So um, pretty much standard percussion elements in my drum group. I have like some checkerboard effect where I don't have this uh, shaker loop and then I do have it. So here's what it is when it comes in. And then my claps, I have like three claps layered, maybe two claps layered. And then I have these foley's right here that uh, stack on top of the snare. So see how this sounds real quick. By itself, it sounds like this. So this is a way, I don't know if you've recognized before, but um, lots of really cool grooves have a different effect on each clap so like it'll a uh, clap or snare will alternate in uh character like every time um so like back and forth from one to the other and this is a way that i do that is i have uh this like foley on top um but in it but it's a different one each hit and it goes back and forth um and then another way that i vary my claps is that i put higher reverb on like um let's see where i do it right here on the group I make reverb um, during just a specific clap to highlight it so let's see what it sounds like so there's those tails um, sometimes which I think are really cool uh, that's about it for the drum group um, so on to the chords so I have um, these piano chords that we start out with I'm playing them on a labs piano. I've got some RC20 on there and this uh, Man American um, EQ that I'm, I've been messing around with. I got it on the um, free, uh, my free, free three plugins during the Labor Day sale for Waves. Um, so those chords then turn into this uh, sine wave patch that I have on Serum. So um, what makes this is this like filter um, wub on uh, envelope here. And then I also have um, noise being automated as well. And that kind of adds even more of the um, vintage feel to these chords. So one of the main um, tips that I want to focus on real quick while we're here in the chord section is I zeroed in on one chord progression. So there's only four chords throughout the entire um, song, but I've inverted them in multiple different ways. So what the, the way that you can see it um, visually here is that these chords descend. So like the highest value basically goes down every time. You can take a chord and regardless of if the original chord, just like the, the standard triad, is above another chord, you can invert it to make it, so like for example, say this chord was, uh, had this note up here. Well, but if I wanted to, if I wanna descend it, I can invert it by moving it down an octave, so that way the feeling of the chords move down, even if the original chord um, that you were using goes up, if that makes any sense, I think it should. So that's how you can use the same chords, but basically alter the curve of energy um, over time. So as you can see visually again, we go down every chord and then we go up when I'm making this anticipation for when the beat kicks in. So um, 
you'll be able to see the effect here. See, over here, when I have the chords that go down, So this is how uh, one way that I um, manipulate my chords to cause anticipation to go in a different direction or uh, make tension or, uh, you know, a more depressing value or whatever. So um, I do the, the inverting and things um, in the sine wave chords as well. So um, the next thing that I want to focus on in these chords is, again, uh, a form of swing. So this is a tip that um, I could have used starting out like the first few songs I ever made. Um, what I didn't know at the time was like the reason they sounded so bad is because I had everything exactly on the grid. Um, lots of you guys probably know about this already, but that's just a one way ticket to uh, sounding like a robot. And whether you know it or not, one thing that makes music sound good is the feeling that it comes from a human. And so when you can tweak things to make them not so robotic, um, you're moving in the right direction, I think. Um, and so now one of the things that I do nowadays is, is really just like mess everything up um, to a, a decent extent to make sure that it doesn't sound computerized. So um, the way that I did that is, um, so like a shuffle, Basically, you can create a shuffle shuffle groove by having your first um, beat on beat and then your off beat like late. So you can see this is the uh, off beat right here and it's like two little sections late. Um, and then you can also add like a groove from Ableton over here in the groove pool. Um, and it'll replicate something kind of to that extent. But the way that I did it was just by hand because I wanted to create it exactly how I was envisioning it. So I went ahead and um, delayed. So see, these just aren't on beat. Um, they're late. And then some of them I um, push even further and then like move towards. And so like I make them even earlier than they were like on the last bar or whatever. Um, another really cool way to emphasize this groove is to make your um make these notes shorter so like you when you have some long and then some shorter so you can see how this works right here there's long and short it emphasizes this like flow then stab um action so like you might be able to pick up on it here the fact that they're shorter make them even more um swingy uh if you will so that's uh, one of the things, one of the main things I wanted to talk about is just, um, you know, tweak things with your hands to make them uh, off grid um, and, you know, kind of go crazy with it. But once you realize that the, the groove is, isn't there anymore, then um, push them back a little bit towards the beat a little bit. So um, on top of these chords, my bass is basically just following the root note of each one of these chords. So here's what the bass sounds like by itself. And with the chords. Um, so you could see, I don't know, you probably heard one of my fills here is like panning hard left and right, uh, just for funsies. So, um, one tip that I have on this bass here, and this is really big, I think I'm probably gonna make a separate video on this because I feel strongly about it. Um, you might know what I'm talking about. I don't know, it's probably happened to you before. You make a beat with, um, I hear it a lot with 808s like in hip hop. Um, one of your 808s, especially one of a higher note is gonna be way louder than one of a, of a lower note. And your 808s just go all over the place. Well. If you didn't know, a especially when it comes to bass, like a low note has the potential to be perceived as way quieter than a higher note. Um, and so that's why I have this multiband dynamic uh, compressor in here. Um, 
on my bass. So without it, listen to whenever we go from this low bass note to the high bass note. These are perceived as way louder. So when I turn it back on, it really tames it and kind of glues it all together. Um, so I'm not gonna get into all the specifics on how to do that um, and how to dial it in, but basically just know that you need to compress it and you can take a look at my settings here and kind of maybe start to understand um, what you need to do. So um, let's see, I'll also move on to one of the main themes of the song, which is um, these, uh, vocal chops that I got off of Splice. So that is like one of the main lead elements of the song. And then I use um, also these two synths. So the way that these interplay together is kind of um, the dance of lead elements that I have going on. So um, that leads me to another um, tip that I wanna focus on. Um, instead of stacking a bunch of things on top of one another, which is another thing that I see a lot um, with beginner uh, beat makers or producers, and this is what I used to do, um, is just you think that you need more stuff. Whenever your song isn't good, you think you need more stuff. Um, that's not the case. Like I was saying with the humanizing thing, like if you right off the bat, if you start out with a human feel and um, make sure each one of your instruments is really um, top notch to begin with, then you're going to feel like your song isn't good less often because you need to have a vision going in. So like, for example, mixing with effects and shit, like while you're creating your instruments before you move on to the next thing um, is a good idea because you, you want to be inspired by your instruments sounding good. Right. So, um, so that's one thing. Um, I think like textures, you know, like I mentioned how I have uh, the noise oscillator on, in my chords, that's like another really subtle thing that differentiates um, good from bad, especially when you guys are starting out, if you are, um, because uh, it's just another way to, to not sound like you're using, um, you know, just the bare bones instruments that come with Ableton or whatever. One thing that I forgot to mention um, is that I uh, also recorded and resampled um, these uh, piano chords and then I put them backwards. I reversed them. And then I automated the panning to go back and forth. So it creates this like um, stereo like movement back and forth and kind of just like stands on the outside of everything and adds like an ethereal kind of um, element to it. Yeah, I guess back to the um, back to the lead elements and the synths and, and the um, instruments and having too many instruments discussion. Um, there's a term that is referred to often uh, by Ill Gates, for example, as checkerboarding, which means um, basically turning your uh, Ableton session into a checkerboard by having one element and then having another one. So like how I have these synths where this synth plays and basically introduces this other one. So like they move back and forth. Um, so if you want to have, I'd say focus on like two elements at a time. And that's what I did here. So like I had those two um, vocal chops that go back and forth between each other um, and interplay. Uh, and those kind of have a slightly different role than, than, these, um, than these lead synths. But yeah, focus on two at once that sound cool together and have one little melody um, idea and then have another one just like I do here. So you can see how the first one leads into the second one. Um, and then the same thing over here. I switch it up a little bit by having the uh, piano 
take the place of um, this little uh, blip melody. So yeah, uh, I just had fun with it. And um, let's see. I also use these risers to kind of like fade into different elements. Um, or I guess like sections of the song. And I use them during kind of like the lulls. And they, they kind of sounded like uh, ocean waves to me. In fact, the, uh, the sample itself is called waves, which is why... Anyway, guys, um, that's about all I can think of right now. I, as I said, I don't want to be as long-winded as some of my other videos. This might this might be long-winded, but it might at least be um, action-packed enough for you guys to not complain about it like you have on some other videos. So, um, hope you got something from this. Let me know if there's anything else specifically in this song that you're wondering about that I didn't get to cover. Um you know, it's pretty standard stuff, but hopefully you got some uh, inspiration from it and um, can create something cool as well. So let me know what you guys are up to. I want to hear about your new music. Um, let me know in the comments. DM me on Instagram if you want me to hear something of yours. Um, I'm really interested in it. Anyway, guys, once again, go ahead and stream the song. Hope you like it. Follow me everywhere to stay up to date whenever I have new music coming out um, and I'll be posting videos whenever I do and then I'll be going over them just like I have in this video. So tell me what you guys are up to. Tell me what you think. Hope you guys are having a good one and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.